Good morning and welcome to our Chicago. I'm Stacy Baca. You've likely heard the phrase strong black woman. That quality might sound like an asset, but Dr. Inger Burnett Ziegler, a clinical psychologist and associate professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Northwestern University says it can actually be detrimental. Women can experience mental and physical issues if they don't face the stress, the trauma in their lives. And Dr. Burnett Ziegler addresses this problem, offers solutions as well. In her new book, it is called Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen, The Emotional Lives of Black Women. And doctor, welcome. We're so happy to be talking about this subject, such a critical issue. Thank you so much for having me. So nice to have you. Why don't we just start? I think the title of your book says a lot. And sometimes we just want to power through, not just black women, but it seems like all women, we want to be strong. But why is this particularly a really important issue for African-American women as well? Sure, you know, strength is our survival mechanism. It's the way that we've been taught to deal with the intergenerational trauma that we experience, to deal with the stress that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. It allows us to be resilient, to put one foot in front of the other, to get things done and get the things accomplished that we need to. However, when we are leading with our strength, often that means that we're avoiding and denying what we're really feeling on the inside. We're not paying attention to those feelings of distress. And when we don't pay attention to and adequately cope with those feelings, they can lead to negative mental and physical health outcomes. It can lead to difficulties in relationships, as well as difficulties functioning in everyday life. One of the things that I read that really struck me is that 80% of African-American women experience trauma of some sort. Give us the range that you're talking about there and really the impact that at, that statistic has. Sure. So, you know, that trauma is along a continuum. It can be anything from childhood, physical, sexual abuse or neglect intimate partner violence, traumatic loss through death or separation, dealing with a chronic health condition, uh, race-based trauma, uh, including microaggressions that people are experiencing in the workplace and otherwise on a day-to-day -day basis. And we know that Black women experience not only uh, more traumatic events than white women, but they also experience more cumulative traumatic events in their lifetime, meaning that the numbers of traumas are greater. And as these traumas pile on top of each other, the negative mental and physical health consequences accumulate, accumulate as well. Right. So I really want to get to the important part of this about what can be done, what can black women do, and especially when you do want to project, I'm strong, I can handle this, I got this. What is your message for basically making this situation better for all women? You know, the, the my key message is that we can be both strong and vulnerable. We can continue to show up for our families, show up in the workplace, do all of the things that we need to get done on a day-to-day -day basis, and also acknowledge how we're feeling. We can prioritize our self-care. We don't have to constantly sacrifice our needs in service of other people because it's important that we take care of ourselves so that we can show up as our fullest and best selves. You're talking about taking care of yourselves, self-care, but when do you need to seek professional help when you really hit the wall? You know, I, I think that that question is, is so important because often we wait until the breaking point. And so I'm really encouraging people to identify, uh, identify a need earlier before earlier along the continuum before they get to that breaking point to implement these strategies for self-care, for rest, for boundaries, for um, incorporating pleasure into day-to-day -day life before they reach that breaking point. But signs of the breaking point is when it's difficult to get up and get out of bed, when it's difficult to leave your home, when it's difficult to uh, complete your day-to-day -day task, either at work or for your family, when you find it hard just to interact with other people, you're irritable, you're on edge, you're anxious and worried all of the time. That's, those are really the key indicators that it's definitely time to seek help from a mental health provider. 
Doctor, thank you so much. Again, Dr. Inger Burnett Ziegler, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. And when we come back to Working on Womanhood, a program in dozens of Chicago public schools that works to improve the emotional well-being of girls. We'll be right back. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.